The CO43, manufactured by the Taylor Company, is a three-flavor custard freezer featuring three 30-quart hoppers. This unit has been designed to produce a rich-tasting custard product that can be drawn off and served from a holding cabinet. In this instructional video, we'll show you how to assemble the parts into the freezer, sanitize them, and prime the freezer with fresh mix. We'll begin where we find the parts disassembled and laid out to air dry from the previous brush cleaning. Refer to your operator's manual for more detailed instructions. Assembly. Before you begin to assemble the machine, make sure the beater switch and the refrigeration switches are in the off position. Failure to follow this instruction may cause severe personal injury to fingers or hands from hazardous moving parts. Begin assembly by first applying lubricant in the groove of the beater shaft and then slide the seal over the shaft and groove until it snaps into place. When lubricating any parts, always use an approved food grade lubricant such as Taylor Lube. Fill the inside portion of the seal with a quarter inch more lubricant and then lubricate the flat side of the seal that fits onto the rear shell bearing. Lubricate the beater shaft. Install and lightly lubricate the H-ring seal on the feed tube. Starting at the hex end of the beater shaft, place a metal leaf spring arched upward over the two pins closest to that end. Inspect each scraper blade for any nicks or signs of excessive wear. Install the long scraper blade on the top of the leaf spring. Place a leaf spring and a short scraper blade on the next set of pins. Hold the two leaf springs and scraper blades in place. Slide the beater shaft into the freezing cylinder until the scraper blades are held in place by the freezing cylinder. Rotate the beater shaft counterclockwise until the next set of pins is facing up. Place a leaf spring and a short scraper blade on the next set of pins. Slide the beater shaft into the freezing cylinder until the blade is held in place by the freezing cylinder. Rotate the beater shaft counterclockwise until the next set of pins is facing up. Continue adding leaf springs and short scraper blades to the beater shaft until all 12 blades are installed. Slide the beater shaft into the freezing cylinder rotating the shaft slightly counterclockwise. Engage the hex end firmly into the drive coupling at the back of the machine. The square portion of the beater shaft assembly should fit completely inside the freezing cylinder. The bearing support pin will extend beyond the freezing cylinder. It may be helpful to use the beater removal tool to turn the beater while pushing on the end of the beater. Install the front bearing on the bearing support pin. Repeat the assembly instructions on the remaining freezing cylinders. With the door in a horizontal position, install the draw arm plate. Install all three short stud nuts and leave them loose. Turn the door over and install the door gasket. To ensure that the gasket is correctly positioned, verify that the middle section of the gasket is arched upward. Press all around the gasket to ensure a flush, secure fit in the groove. Seat the door on the freezer studs. Hand tighten the stud nuts equally in a crisscross pattern to ensure the door is snug. Repeat the assembly instructions on the remaining freezing cylinders. Using lukewarm water, prepare four gallons of an approved 100 ppm sanitizing solution following the manufacturer's instructions. Place the feed tube and the flow control rod flat in the bottom of the hopper. Place the product chute in the hopper. Make sure the draw arm plate is closed and the short door stud nuts are snug. 
attach the splash guard to the door studs. Place an empty mix pail under the draw arm plate if your machine is not equipped with a trough. Pour the four gallons of sanitizing solution into the hopper. Brush clean the mix hopper. Place the beater switch in the on position and set the timer for five minutes. After the five minutes has elapsed, open the draw arm plate and drain the sanitizer into the empty mix pail. If your machine is equipped with a trough, drain the sanitizer into the trough. Place the beater switch in the off position and the flow adjustment knob in the closed position. Sanitize your hands with an approved sanitizing solution and then remove the splash guards from the doors. Remove the chute from the hopper. Install the feed tube assembly in the mix inlet hole located at the bottom of the hopper. Make sure the feed tube is completely seated in the mix inlet hole. Place one end of the flow control rod into the hole located on the feed tube. Place the other end of the rod in the hole on the front flow control lever. Repeat for the remaining freezing cylinders. Priming. Custard. When performing priming procedures, keep your fingers out of the fill and discharge openings. Failure to do so may result in severe personal injury, contaminated product, or component damage. Verify that the flow adjustment knob is in the close position and the beater motor switch is in the off position. The draw arm plate must also be closed. Install the notched hopper covers on the front half of the hoppers. Place the hopper refrigeration knob in the on position and set the timer for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes has elapsed, fill the hopper with fresh mix. Install the hopper covers with the raised edge on the back half of the hoppers. Place the beater switch and the refrigeration switch in the on position. Set the timer for one minute. The refrigeration switch will not activate unless the beater switch is on. After the minute has elapsed, open the draw arm plate and turn the flow adjustment knob back to five, then back to two and one half. Wait two to four minutes for the frozen custard to appear. The first couple of inches of custard will force out any remaining sanitizing solution and should be discarded. When the custard looks firm and servable, install the product chute. The flow adjustment knob is used to adjust the flow of mix. Turning the adjustment knob clockwise increases the flow. A counterclockwise turn decreases the flow. Adjust the mix flow as needed to maintain proper product consistency. A chattering noise indicates that not enough mix is entering the freezing cylinder. It may be necessary to increase the flow of mix into the freezing cylinder. Increase the flow control knob only one half a number at a time. It takes three to five minutes to see the results of the adjustment. Whenever an adjustment is made, first turn the adjustment knob all the way to five and then back to the desired number. Continue to run the frozen custard into the holding cabinet until the desired amount is obtained. Adjust the mix flow as needed to maintain proper product consistency. Follow the whole cycle during operation instructions if more custard will be made later. Repeat for the remaining freezing cylinders. Priming. Lemon ice. Verify that the flow adjustment knob is in the closed position and the beater motor switch is in the off position. Close the draw arm plate. Make sure both the left stud nut and the right stud nut are snug. Attach the front hopper cover. Fill the hopper with lemon ice mixture. Attach the rear hopper cover. 
Turn the flow adjustment knob all the way to five, then back to two and one half. Set the timer for one minute. After the minute has elapsed, place the beater and refrigeration switches in the on position. Set the timer for three minutes. After the three minutes has elapsed, open the draw arm plate to check for proper frozen lemon ice consistency. If the lemon ice is too soft, close the draw arm plate for 20 to 30 seconds. Check again until the lemon ice is servable. Install the product chute when frozen lemon ice appears. Open the draw arm plate and secure it in place. Continue to run the frozen lemon ice into the holding cabinet until the desired amount is obtained. Adjust the mix flow as needed to maintain the proper product consistency. Place the lemon ice freezing cylinder refrigeration switch in the off position between runs. Hold cycle during operation. Place the flow adjustment knob in the closed position. Set the timer for one minute. After the minute has elapsed, the refrigeration switch should be placed in the hold position for custard or in the off position for lemon ice. When the frozen custard stops flowing, place the beater motor switch in the off position. This should take at least three minutes. Use the rake to remove as much custard from the product door as possible. Close the draw arm plate and hand tighten both door stud nuts. Remove the custard chute and take it to the sink for cleaning and sanitizing. Close the dipping cabinet lid. Prepare a squeeze bottle of approved 100 ppm sanitizing solution. Squeeze the sanitizing solution around the draw arm plate and stud nuts to remove any leftover product. If necessary, brush clean the area with the door spout brush and rinse with the sanitizing solution. Repeat for the remaining freezing cylinders. Preparing for shutdown. Perform the following procedures to remove the remaining custard in the freezing cylinder when there is mix in the hopper. Place the refrigeration switch in the off position. Set the timer for 20 minutes. This allows the freezing cylinder enough time to warm before you remove the remaining custard. Place the beater switch in the on position. Open the dipping cabinet lid and attach the chute. Turn the flow control knob to 5. Open the draw arm plate. Run the remaining mix through the freezing cylinder and properly dispose of the mix. After all the custard has drained from the hopper, remove the hopper covers, the flow control rod, and the feed tube. Repeat these procedures for the remaining freezing cylinders. Place the hopper refrigeration switch in the off position. Close the draw arm plate. Remove the chute and install the splash guard. With a pail beneath the draw arm plate, pour four gallons of cool, clean water into the hopper. Scrub the mix hopper with the brushes provided. Place the beater switch in the on position. Open the draw arm plate all the way. Drain the rinse water from the freezing cylinder. Repeat this procedure until all mix residue is gone and the water is clear. Place the beater switch in the off position. Repeat for the remaining freezing cylinders. Cleaning. Failure to follow these cleaning procedures may result in bacterial contamination of the frozen custard product. Make sure the refrigeration switch is in the off position. Using lukewarm water, prepare four gallons of an approved 100 ppm cleaning solution. Pour the cleaning solution into the hopper and brush clean the sides and bottom of the hopper. Use the draw valve brush to clean the mix inlet hole. Place the beater switch in the on position. Set the timer for five minutes. After the five minutes has elapsed, drain all the solution from the freezing cylinder. Place the beater switch in the off position. 
Repeat for each freezing cylinder. Disassembly. Remove the door assembly. Remove the gasket from the product door. Remove the front bearing from the door or beater shaft. While removing the beater shaft, take each blade and leaf spring off and place them in a container for cleaning. Remove the rear seal from the beater shaft. Use a single-use towel to remove the lubricant from the seal before taking it to the sink for cleaning. Remove the hopper covers, the feed tube, the flow control rod, and the H-ring from the feed tube. Take all of the parts to the sink for complete disassembly and brush cleaning. Repeat for each freezing cylinder. Use the double-ended brush to clean the inside of the feed tube. Return to the freezer with a small amount of cleaning solution. Brush clean the rear shell bearings at the back of each freezing cylinder with the long black bristle brush. Brush clean the freezing cylinder with the long white brush. Place all clean parts on a clean, dry surface to air dry overnight. Empty, clean, and reinstall the rear drip pan. Wipe all the exterior surfaces of the freezer with a clean, sanitized towel. Thank you for taking the time to view this Taylor Model C043 operational training video. By following these procedures, you will extend the life of your machine and enjoy many years of profitable service.